10. Hard Rejection Two people worked together at a restaurant in Miami Beach. One of them was Delfina Pond, 28 years old. The other was 20-year-old Lucas Mariani. But there was more going on here than just serving drinks and making tips. Lucas continually tried starting a relationship with Delfina, and she continued to refuse him. The entire restaurant was filled with the stench of desperation, awkwardness, and cheap margaritas. But Lucas didn't take rejection very well. According to the police report, when Delfina left the restaurant on November 29th after her shift, Lucas followed a short time later. He left in the middle of his own shift, tracked Delfina to her home, and tried desperately to get inside her apartment. This was when everything turned deadly. Delfina wouldn't let him inside, she refused to even speak with him about his proposal for a relationship, and she told him to get lost. He was a creep, and a desperate one at that. He became so desperate in the end, as she tried to make him leave, that he pulled a knife and stabbed her. He stabbed her again and again until she was dead, and then he turned the knife on himself. A neighbor witnessed the whole thing and called the cops. When they arrived, they found Lucas lying on top of Delfina in a pool of blood. Both were rushed to the hospital, where Delfina died, and her assailant miraculously survived. 9. Blood and Beer In August of 2010, early in the morning on the Tuesday shift at Hartford Distributors, a disgruntled employee showed up and started shooting. His name was Omar S. Thornton, an employee of the beer distributorship in Connecticut. He was responsible for killing at least eight of his co-workers. It all began when Omar was given the opportunity to either quit or be terminated. He had a disciplinary hearing with a union representative, and it didn't go over too well. Whatever Omar had been doing at work, it was serious enough that they were done with him. But instead of quitting and walking out peacefully, Omar chose to be terminated. He was in the middle of being escorted out of the office building when he suddenly turned and started shooting. According to one of the witnesses, John Hollis of the Connecticut Teamsters Union, the shooting was indiscriminate. Omar had previously complained to his family about being racially harassed at work, with some of his co-workers even joking about hanging him like it was 1872. The morning of the killing, he phoned his mother and apologized for what he had done. He even said goodbye. That was after Omar had already stormed through the offices and shot every single person that he could find for 45 straight minutes. 8. Death at a Furniture Plant Murder erupted at a North Carolina furniture plant after a silly argument spiraled out of control. The argument was between Tangela Parker and Felicia Marlowe. On January 13th, the two women got into a fight about moving tables at TCS Designs where they worked. When the Hickory police arrived and found Felicia dead from a gunshot wound, Tangela was already long gone. She fled the scene, hooked up with her husband, and they fled as quickly as they could. According to Felicia's husband, it wasn't even that big of a shock that Tangela resorted to murder. His wife had previously complained about Tangela being a bully. She had even filed a complaint with management after Tangela screamed in her face. It took six months for the United States Marshals to finally arrest the couple on the run. They tracked them all the way from the furniture plant in North Carolina to Phoenix, Arizona. They were hiding and living under aliases. They were so serious about dropping off the grid that they were surviving by begging for money on the street and panhandling. They even lived out of their Honda CRV after changing its license plate to evade the cops. Alas, all that work didn't really pay off. They got to spend six months as beggars, and now they're in jail. 7. Tesla Killer a Tesla employee got into an argument with his co-worker in the parking lot of the company's Fremont factory. Anthony Solima was so fed up with Lee Brazier 
that at the end of his shift, he shot and killed the man. Anthony waited for him in the parking lot. As Lee tried to get into his vehicle, Anthony blasted him. Anthony tried to make an escape, but he was caught the next day. Authorities have been unable to get a specific motive out of Anthony, who's trying to maintain his innocence. But according to other co-workers, his desire to kill Lee Brazer probably began that morning. The two had gotten into such a heated argument that Anthony quit the job and loaded his stuff into his vehicle. He was seen leaving the parking lot, but he came back just before quitting time and waited for his opportunity. According to a probable cause court statement, it's believed Anthony waited at just the right vantage so that he could see Lee as he was getting into his vehicle. Before Lee could even turn the key to open his car door, Anthony blew his brains out the front of his face with an AR-15. If convicted, Anthony will get life in prison with no possibility of parole. He may even get the death penalty since he sat and waited to shoot Lee Brazer with every intention of killing him. 6. Lynched A man who was on a camping trip with an old co-worker was fatally shot and killed in rural Pennsylvania. Relatives of the victim have called his death a modern lynching. They're frustrated that only a few people have been detained and no one has been arrested or charged with murder. Here's what happened. Peter Bernardo Spencer was shot several times at a residence on December 12th. Four people who were there at the time were questioned and then released after consulting with the district attorney. It's still going to take more time for the police to get ballistic data, toxicology, and other lab results. What we know beyond a doubt is that somebody shot and killed Peter. It started at around 2.30 in the morning, with Peter taking at least nine bullets to his back. Peter was an immigrant from Jamaica and the only person in the camping trip with dark skin. His relatives believe he was brought on the camping trip specifically so that he could be lynched and killed. It was his former colleague who dreamed up the whole scenario, allegedly. However, the police have completely stonewalled the public and won't tell anyone anything. We don't have any answers other than that Peter, lured into rural Pennsylvania by a man he trusted and once worked with, was brutally killed. He was shot nearly a dozen times in the back as if by a firing squad. What's your take on this terrifying murder? Was it a premeditated slaughter or did something go horribly wrong during the camping trip? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. 5. Killed Before Her Wedding Annie Lee was an exceptional young woman with a smile known to light up a room. She was 24 years old, an academic star, and on her way to earning herself a doctorate at Yale University. She was also five days away from getting married when she went missing from the campus lab in 2009. Her corpse was discovered a few days later when the police noticed the stench of a decomposing body. And even though her killer was captured and convicted, the truth behind Annie's death remains a mystery to this very day. She vanished on September 8th. Security camera footage showed her entering the building at 10 o'clock in the morning, but never captured her leaving. Bloody clothes were found in the ceiling on September 12th. On the 13th was when cops smelled the decomposing corpse. They brought in cadaver dogs and found her body stuffed inside a wall, upside down. It was the same day she was supposed to be walking down the aisle. According to an unidentified police source, she had been crushed in the wall and was like mush. She was so smashed that the police couldn't recognize her as a person. The medical examiner determined that she died from asphyxiation by neck compression. Her jaw was broken, her collarbone was broken, and she had been sexually violated. It turned out that one of her colleagues in the lab, another technician named Ray Clark, killed her in the most violent and degrading way possible. He was given a prison sentence of 44 years, but to this day, he's never given a motive for why he did it. 4. Mass Killer Michael McDermott 
Every week for almost a decade, Michael McDermott drove over one hour to the city of Dedham, Massachusetts to donate blood. He gave out of his own volition, receiving no payment. He even had a sticker on his bumper, give blood. Ask anyone who knew him, he was a pretty ordinary guy and not someone who would have a mental breakdown and shoot everyone at work. But that's exactly what happened. The morning after Christmas in the year 2000, Michael went into Edgewater Technology where he wrote code for the company software. He talked to one of his co-workers about video games. Then, at about 11 o'clock in the morning, he walked into the lobby with an AK-47, a shotgun, and a pistol. One of his colleagues asked where he was going with that. He answered, human resources. When Michael arrived at human resources, he shot two of the employees at reception and continued down the hall. From here, he started picking off people as he saw them. He killed three, kept on going to accounting, and blasted through the door and gunned down two more people. Absolutely nobody saw the horror coming. It was completely random, at least from the outside. When the dust had settled and seven people were dead, investigators tried to figure out a motive. They believe it probably had to do with money. Human resources were garnishing his wages to pay overdue taxes that he owed to the IRS. He was broke. He felt like he was spinning on a treadmill with nowhere to go, and he took out his frustration on the people at work. The poor, innocent people who were just doing their jobs. 3. Lockheed Martin Shooting Spray On July 8, 2003, the Lockheed Martin plant in Meridian, Mississippi fell victim to a violent gunman. Douglas Williams was an assembly line worker at the plant who went completely insane and shot 14 of his co-workers with a shotgun. Six of them died, but the rest luckily survived. Not only was this a horrifying shooting, but it was motivated by racial prejudice. Five out of the six that died during the incident were African American, and it was no coincidence. At the time, this was the deadliest workplace shooting in the United States since December of 2000, when a man named Michael McDermott brutally slaughtered seven of his co-workers. It was also described as the worst hate crime since the Civil Rights Movement. On the day of the shooting, Douglas was attending a mandatory ethics and diversity class. According to colleagues at the plant, he already had a history of making threats and racist comments. The threats were always aimed at his African-American co-workers. While Douglas was at the ethics and diversity class, others noted him as being agitated more than usual. He stayed at the meeting for just a few minutes, had an ordinary conversation with one of his colleagues, and then stormed out of the room. The last thing he said to anyone was, I'll take matters into my own hands. Douglas went to his pickup truck, grabbed a few guns, and walked back into the room. He shouted profanities and then started unloading. It was indiscriminate chaos, with co-workers being shot in the face, the hands, the back, and everywhere else. He eventually left that room and headed to the main factory, where he continued his deadly rampage. It lasted all of just 10 minutes. 2. Murder for Hire Johnny Wright Jr. and Chariot Burks are awaiting trial for the homicide of a man named Adan Farid Katami. The victim was shot to death in his vehicle as he was stopped at an intersection back in July. But the killers weren't the ones behind the assassination. It was Takesha Upshaw, a woman from California, who hired the duo to take out a business partner. Alameda County Sheriff Sergeant Ray Kelly called it a sinister and elaborate plot. Takesha and Adan had been in the marijuana growing business together. They were partners, more or less. When they started having problems, Takesha reached out to a third party to connect her to the hitman. Johnny and Shariat are from Tennessee, over 2,000 miles away. Hiring hitmen from out of town was supposed to help throw the police off everyone's trail, but it didn't work. The cops figured everything out, and every single person involved has been arrested. 
Even in a business like growing marijuana for distributors, a disagreement between co-workers can end up deadly. 1. The Lear Plant Shooting A woman in Tuscaloosa was given 50 years in prison after she murdered her co-worker at the Lear Corporation plant. Her name is Angela Mayo, guilty of killing a 27-year-old mother named Shanina Smith. They were both employed at the corporation, both working the night shift. Deputies were called when the shooting started, and when they arrived, they discovered Smith dead on the floor. She had been filled with bullets and bled out before help could arrive. When the police questioned Angela as to her motive, it was pretty weak. She claimed that she killed Shanina Smith because she was continuously brushing up against her for the past eight months. They worked side by side at the assembly line and apparently Shanina was always accidentally bumping against Angela. But she never said anything, instead chewing on her irritation until it got so bad that she brought a gun to work. On the assembly line, she pulled that gun out and shot Smith three times in the face. When Smith fell to the floor, Angela shot her a few more times for good measure. Have you ever seen one of your coworkers nearly attack another coworker? Let us know your horror stories in the comments and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more awesome videos. Bye.